Charlie, I have followed your work since the 1960s, and it has informed my thinking, not always agree, uh, but I, I want to get your reflection in the, in the bigger picture. Uh, if I would give you my assent that ESP is true to the degree that you would think it is, which is maybe a weak kind of thing, but something that's real, what would be the implications for human existence, for the nature of human consciousness, or consciousness in, in its totality? The way I usually think about it is that most people have adopted a pretty materialistic attitude and think that science supports this as the final answer. You exist because a lot of molecules kept bumping into each other accidentally for a zillion years, and some of them stuck together, and now it's you. But that's all you are. You're just a meat computer. And when you the meat computer comes apart, you're gone. So live, drink, and be merry, for tomorrow you die. And if other people are just meat computers too, well, why not use them to the way that's most advantageous to you? It, it doesn't force you to that kind of morality, but it makes it very easy to just exploit people and not care about it. On the other hand, if ESP says these religions that say we're deeply connected in some higher way have any truth in them, maybe it's kind of dumb to hurt somebody else, you know? It's not that uh, an angry God will punish me if I'm mean to somebody else. It's that in some sense of a connection, that will affect me also. I think it provides a basis for taking a lot of religions seriously. Now, that doesn't mean that there's any proof that any particular religion is true in its particulars, but it says that in general there's something. So one particular example, if, if you're a materialist and you think about somebody saying a prayer, they're talking to themselves. End of story, right? Uh, if they pray out loud, it can be heard in the room they're in and then it falls off at the square of the distance. You know, they're just wasting their breath. But if you look at all these telepathy experiments, uh, one person's intentions or mental content can sometimes be picked up by another person off at a distance. Maybe there's something, maybe you should just throw out the idea of prayer a priori. Maybe you should look at what it does and doesn't do and things like that. I am I believe in applying basic scientific method to getting more factual answers on these things, not just getting over-attached to our theories. You, you've made the statement that I posit, meaning you, I posit experience as one kind of fundamental data. What, what do you mean by that? I don't know what you mean. Say that again. <clears throat> Good. You've made the statement. I'm quoting you now. This is from, from I think, your, your essay in uh, Journal of Scientific Exploration. I posit experience as one kind of fundamental data. Ah, yes. And it's much more difficult to study than physical things, OK? If I want to know what the circuitry in this machine is doing, I can take out meters of one sort or another, learn all sorts of things. My attitude doesn't particularly matter. But if I ask you, what exactly are you feeling right now? It's, you may not know, or you may try to describe it and it's changing even as you talk about it. It's much harder to study experience because it's much more fluid. On the other hand, our experience is what drives our lives. If you're angry at someone, you kill them. The experience that leads up to that is important. Uh, you're, in another way, you're compassionate toward them. I think experience has to be taken as basic reality also. And let's see what we can learn from studying it better. As it is, we pay no attention to it. You know, the behaviorism was so strong in psychology for years, you know, they sort of thought of it was a disadvantage that people could talk that confused people. Uh. <laughs> to make experience as fundamental, what does that is that a claim that consciousness is in some sense itself fundamental? And as um, is uh, being discussed in uh, in philosophy of mind, um, whether it's um, uh, panpsychism or some variant. Uh, 
or idealism or consciousness is the only thing does 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 your claim that experience is fundamental support consciousness as uh, part of the the foundational structure of existence yes except if i use the word fundamental i'm sorry i used it by fundamental i mean we should pay close attention to it and study it okay if, if by fundamental i mean i know the absolute truth about the way things are forever and ever that's nonsensical you know yeah. what's fundamental or not fundamental in a dozen years from now you may change drastically but to simply say, forget about it, we'll just keep measuring the brain waves and the neurochemicals and then we'll understand everything. I think we're missing out on a really important part of life. Thank you for watching. If you like this video, please like and comment below. You can support Closer to Truth by subscribing.